welcome to this edition of Hebrew Nation News on YouTube. At Hebrew Nation Radio, we bring you news that is not found in the mainstream media. We look at the facts on the ground in the news and then connect those facts back to the scriptures, always asking the question, what time is it? We don't just give you the facts, but we also ask, what does it mean? Reporting to you live with boots on the ground from the land of Israel, this is Warrior Bride with Hebrew Nation News on YouTube. Will creating a Palestinian state end the violence and terrorism? Not. In the news currently, we are hearing of the nations who are pushing on Israel to give up land in exchange for peace in order to create a Palestinian state. We hear the world's media even blaming Israel for the recent Paris terrorist attack. We see headlines such as this. Palestinian Authority Claims Israel Planned Paris Attacks and Muslims Threatened Paris Bataclan Cafe for Supporting the IDF. Now the EU has approved of labeling standards for products coming from Biblical Judea and Samaria, also known as the hotly contested Green Zone or the West Bank so the consumers can boycott those products, effectively putting a stranglehold on the Israeli economy. The world seems to think that if only the Palestinian state is established, that the violence and terrorism would stop, that Islam and the Palestinians would finally be at peace. But is this really true? The Hamas charter states the following about Israel. Israel will rise and will remain erect until Islam eliminates it as it had eliminated its predecessors. Regarding the Palestinian Authority, they make no attempt to educate their people towards peace and coexistence with Israel. On the contrary, from every possible platform, it repeatedly rejects Israel's right to exist, presents the conflict, as a religious battle for Islam, depicts the establishment of Israel as an act of imperialism and perpetuates a picture of the Middle East, both verbally and visually, in which Israel does not exist at all. Israel's destruction is said to be both inevitable and a Palestinian obligation. Maps presenting all of Israel as Palestine appear in Palestinian school books and are shown regularly on PA TV. Now let's take a look at ISIS. The stated goal of ISIS is to reestablish an Islamic caliphate across the Middle East. And then we have the Quran, which states, O you who believe, take not the Jews and Christians for friends. That's Surah. Book 5, verse 51, and Surah, book 2, verse 89, unbelievers, particularly Jews, are accursed. Surah 2, verse 191 to 193 states, fight and kill unbelievers until religion is Allah's. That is, Islamic law rules all societies. And slay them wherever you come upon them and expel them from where they expelled you. All of these groups and organizations deny Israel's right to exist as a nation. Establishing a Palestinian state is just a stage and a step towards pushing all the Jews into the sea and annihilating Israel entirely. So, dividing up biblical Judea and Samaria lands, that is, the West Bank or the Green Zone, to create a Palestinian state will not stop the violence and terrorism. In fact, it would probably make things worse. The Islamist radicals don't want just a piece of the land, they want it all. The goal of these organizations and the ideology behind them, Islam, is to eradicate, erase, stamp out, and obliterate any trace of Israel and the Jews. But it goes much farther than that. The global caliphate has a reach to all the nations of the earth. So will dividing the land and creating a Palestinian state end the terrorism and violence? Not at all. 
Israel is fighting a fight for the preservation of Western civilization as we know it. Paris has just gotten a horrific taste of what Israel has been enduring and fighting against for decades. Deepest condolences to France. Now let's hear from Israel Midad, who is one of the key leaders on the Benjamin region and who resides in biblical Samaria, also known as the hotly contested Green Zone. Israel Midad resides in Shiloh, the Benjamin region of Israel, and he is Resource Information Director at the Menachem Begin Heritage Center. He also contributes a weekly column on media criticism to the Jerusalem Post. He blogs and lectures on Zionist history, Israel politics, and the renewed Jewish presence in Judea and Samaria. Recently, Israel Medad spoke to the Connect to Israel tour when they visited the ancient site of Shiloh. Let's hear what he has to say. Theoretically speaking, who agreed to the 1947 compromise after we agreed to the 1938 white paper, after we agreed to the 1922 giving away of the Transjordan area, which is part of Palestine? Who rejected all the compromises over the years? In 1967, the war broke out. Most of you could remember that. Not the young kids, luckily for you. Okay? But most of us can. Was there occupation? <clears throat> Was there illegal settlements being built in 67? No. So what was the reason? Whatever the reason was, if I now finish my occupation and unbuild, unconstruct, dismantle communities of Jewish life, which you see, you've been through the area now, agriculture, schools, cultural enterprises, scientific enterprises. You were at Ariel? Okay, you have a university there with Arab students. Okay? Apo you heard the claim apartheid roads? How do our people get killed in drive-by killings if they're apartheid roads? Where the Arab cars are driving? On some sci-fi road uh, above the road? You, you ask people, how could there be an apartheid road if this happens and they turn you off? There's a decadence of deterioration that's happening in the world today. And you have the responsibility to think, analyze, and make the good choice. I'm not going to hold you up any longer. That was my thunderous last word. <laughs> Again, thank you very much for being here with us. Let's wrap this up. Winston Churchill was a man of his time who stood strong against the rise of Nazism as it ravaged through Europe. He said this, The definition of an appeaser is one who feeds a crocodile hoping that it will eat him last. Churchill's predecessor, Chamberlain, fed Adolf Hitler Sudetenland, a portion of Czechoslovakia, hoping that the Nazi crocodile would eat him last. You know the rest of the story. Poland was the next country to get eaten. May there be Winston Churchill-like leaders that will rise up today who will stand against the crocodile that would want to devour Israel and the rest of the nations by absorbing them into an Islamic caliphate. May we not go down the path of appeasement. May the governors of Judah arise, as it is written in Zechariah 12, verses 5 and 6. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength, and Yahweh of hosts, their Elohim. In that day I will make the governors of Judah like a fire pan in the woodpile, and like a fiery torch in the sheaves. They shall devour all the surrounding peoples on the right hand and on the left, but Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place. Jerusalem. And in Obadiah 19. 
But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. But the house of Esau shall be stubble. They shall kindle them and devour them, and no survival shall remain of the house of Esau. For Yahweh has spoken. Shalom. Do you appreciate Hebrew Nation News YouTube reports? Please help keep Hebrew Nation Radio and YouTube News reports coming your way. Hebrew Nation Radio and News depends 100% on your gifts and donations. If this news and ministry blesses you, please pray for us. And then, if you are led by the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, please consider making a financial gift to the ministry. Just go to HebrewNationOnline.com. You will see the donate box on the right. You can make a tax-deductible, secure, online gift here with PayPal or Visa. Thank you in advance for your prayers and for your financial gifts. May the Father greatly bless you. Shalom.